and welcome to this very special episode of Good Game. I'm at Hamer Hall in Melbourne, where soon this stage will be filled with musicians and the auditorium will be filled with gamers who've come along to listen to a very unique collaboration between an award-winning composer, three of Australia's funniest comedians and an entire symphony orchestra. We're sort of in our early 40s now. We did see this genre start from that first Space Invader machine at the fish and chip shop. And uh, this is rock and roll. This is a new thing. This is gonna be big, isn't it? It's a love letter to the relationships that can come from playing games together. And as funny as it sounds, the truth of the things you kind of learn about life and even about yourself through games. We've worked with lots of different kinds of ensembles, I'm proud to be able to say, but nothing quite with the scale of this. Here is Tripod. Comedy trio Tripod have had a long and illustrious career spanning over 20 years on the Australian entertainment scene. But what some may not know is that video games have played an important role in their material and the unique rapport they have with each other. We've kind of done songs about video games already in the past and little bits of other shows and stuff to do with video games, but then we were like, what if it's about us and video games? Because that's a big part of our relationship, you know, when we go to lunch in the middle of the day or when we're wherever we are, we'll just start talking about games. I love the contrast between the thump of the, of the like, machine gun and the casings tinkling on the ground. <laughs> tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. It's very musical, isn't it? <laughs> You're a psycho. We'd been sort of courting, in various ways, the, the MSO to do something for years, really. And then finally, Andrew Hogson, who's not only a great creative, but a fellow gamer as well, approached us about doing something. We were brainstorming a whole bunch of ideas of, of ways that we could uh, design new concerts and have um, different audiences coming into the hall, um, which is a you know, real passion of, of the MSO. And serendipitously, I saw Tripod um, up at the ABC cafe and I introduced myself and said that you know, hey, I really enjoyed their, their last show and perhaps we should do a show together. So now that Tripod has finally roped in the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, or rather the MSO has roped in Tripod, it was Andrew Pogson's job to find a conductor and orchestrator who could mesh Tripod's songwriting with the power of over 60 instrumentalists. And the BAFTA-nominated composer of Journey, Austin Wintory, became the last piece in the Triforce. Were you familiar with any of Tripod's work before any of this? Oh, I've been a fanboy for my entire life. And actually I wasn't, I'm, I'm sorry to say. I, of course, once he told me about the premise of the show, you know, being, I started Googling and it took about one second to realize these are, these are my kind of guys. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're so just, fun. The business plan was we're moving into writing shows that you can only do with 60 people. And it's so smart. It's, it's a smart business smart plan. Move. Really, the only name that popped into my head uh, was Austin. I mean, he's the perfect choice for, for someone who understands not only the full orchestral palette and, and I guess the, the power that the symphony can bring, but also understands gaming. I mean, he's a massive gamer himself and uh, he understands all of those worlds. There are a lot of comedy songwriters in the world that are basically okay songwriters musically and clever lyricists. So it's like simple chords that don't matter, but with witty lyrics on top, and that's what comprises the majority of what I would call comedy songwriting. Those are the facts, the guy in the car. And the other thing that immediately jumped out was that that was not the case here, that these were real musicians who write real music that actually takes unexpected twists and turns. It's no joke, the guy in the car, he pulls out an axe. In a game, if that stuff happened, you wouldn't think twice. But in real life, you go into shock. Your whole body fills up with blood and a dread. You get numbers to help you predict the way it will play when you hit a conflict. There I am at the lights with my guts on the floor. And I'm frozen in fright. And he opens the door. And the lights change to green. 
would have been easy, and I imagine this show would have happened five years earlier if we'd wanted to do a, a tripod greatest hits show or old songs. But those songs aren't written for an orchestra, they're written for guitars and harmonies. It would have been a waste of the potential of such an ensemble to mash them onto a three chord funny song. So right from the beginning we structured these songs to be harmonically adventurous and structurally adventurous and tell a story but with the kind of sweep and texture that, that an orchestra can live up to. And when I got home well, I logged in with the bedroom lights all off And gathered bear pelts for the nesting wary quest And when I handed in the pelts I got a little golden ding And then I got that lovely feeling in my chest That feeling that the universe is clean geometry Perfect circles of majestic stateliness And not a mess We are blessed And how did that relationship with Austin begin? Well, Andrew at the MSO put us together with Austin. So you're entering that first Skype meeting with a very blank slate as far as what sort of guy is this going to be? How is this going to go? How does that say 17 missed calls? Austin Wintery, 17 missed calls. And it is super polite at the start and you, you're just kind of feeling each other out. But very quickly we descended into, into realising how much we had in common and how much we had to offer each other. We were well into the project before we ever met in Los Angeles, which was only the one other time before this week. Naturally the place to go with it, especially the way your stands. Kind of, I like the idea of bending it away in an yeah. unexpected yeah, yeah, yeah. place. Well, that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're hoping for. Absolutely. Yeah. The traditional relationship between composer and arranger or orchestrator is quite, they're quite distinct separate roles. But really quickly we realised Austin has so much knowledge of games and an understanding and knew exactly where we were coming from. So the line really blurred, particularly with the ideas and what we wanted the show to be about and where we wanted it to go. They'd actually send me relatively finished songs uh, in many cases where they had done their work pretty extensively prior to that and then sent it to me. I would approach it with a very blank canvas and say, what can this be? And in some cases that meant, what if we added measures here and we did this? Or what if I brought back the tune in this place and, and kind of built it up into a, a symphonic piece so that it never felt like songs that you could do justifiably with piano and guitar that we've basically added orchestra to, which is when one says orchestration, that is often what that means. It's a growing industry. Have a track a moving target. Good for the economy. Seeing it explode. Sorry, stop, sorry, sorry, sorry. What are you doing? What, what are you doing? This is when we're acting this. <laughs> but that is the idea. So if, if you want to kind of futz that bar 100 down deep so that it kind of Sounds like it just got ripped away from you guys. Shut down by a loved one, even though my hobby is a valid one. Shut down, so shut down. Why don't you take my heart and rip it out and kick it round? And that, the, the moment with my dad, that, that could have turned very differently. He <laughs> could have, uh, basically, I was working at his news agency in the early 90s and that CD-ROM started coming in next to the magazines and things. And he just looked at one of them and said, Sim City, what, what, what do you do? And I really thought it was an opportunity to get him on. We've got a gamer here. Christmas time in Dad's news agency. And I'm helping him with new stuff coming. CD rolls next to the magazines. And I'm explaining as I trust them. Cause I think my dad would like them. Sim City, is it fun? You plan a town right up from the ground till it turns into a metropolis. You administer your resources and cash so your citizens stay content. 
Stephen. I run a shop. Ooh, shut down by my own dad. So much for the bonding time we could have had. Shut down, so shut down. We could have taken what we've learnt in this shop and run a town. A lot of people love that song, Shut Down, because some of them relate to it from the point of view of the gamer who's, who's you know, trying to sort of sell the idea of gaming, but a lot of other people who've heard it identify with the other character in that uh, as well and feel like they're being kind of portrayed or in some way respected by it. It's not that you don't have good points, it's just I wish they weren't so pointy. You hit the nail upon the head, but did you have to hit my head with the nail? I just do it to relax. But you do it instead of sleeping. Can I get back to the black gate? No, you can't, no, you can't, because it's not really there. You are being pretty then, so I react by being us, and you can see how things are gonna escalate. It's an interactive art, and it's good for children's reading, and you're learning about guns. It's a form of storytelling, good for problem solving skills, and the different gun attachments. Shut down by my own friends. So when it comes to writing these songs, you're not looking for specific references from games. It's more the mood and the feeling that gaming provides. It's very easy to get drawn into that into that trap of, you know, I'm going to name check something and because you recognise it, you're going to clap and it's going to be a very sort of hermetic system. But um, when you're writing a song, you, you are looking for the human bit, the bit that touches on what's going on inside people and in their relationships. It doesn't really matter what you're writing the song about. Who are you? What brings you to my Strunmach, my mountain? I do love that there's a song called Skyrim and it's about the character that Scott's created and how he plays it, how he likes to play, and, and, and it's about the character that Gatesy plays. And, you know, it's about that game, you know, on the surface of it, and we're talking about mm. that game and how that game works and what you can do in that game. But it actually ends up being about how humans mm. respond to, to a framework that a game mm. that a game sort of provides you. Yeah, that's particularly right. Particularly like that game. Yeah, well, that game is a really great example of a game that provides you with the tools to make a story, but really where the fun is is what you do with those tools. I don't know how many other art forms have been have, are so active in drawing the audience in and collaborating with the audience to create this this new thing, this unique kind of thing, experience. My guy, see him journey through the tundra with My guy, see the scars upon his tree trunk arms. There's a story to each item in his infantry menu. Each piece of iron he wields The helmet that he won from a troll The gloves that he just saved up and bought My guy! My guy! See the purpose on his orcish brow My guy! My guy! My guy! His rugged bearing carries a snaggletooth's dignity the shine upon the pauldrons that he has forged. What's a pauldron? The trail of defeated foes. The legend of his dark results. Like the beastly wilds of the mountain folk. My guy has a modus operandi. Just two skills that he lives by. Illusion and two-handed axe. Casts a calming spell to help his foes relax. Then, uh, taking his time, he just chops off each head one by one as they stand, calmly waiting for death. 
what's exciting about a game like Skyrim is that you can say, as a player, this is how I want to express myself, right? I want to internally murder my foe before externally murdering them, okay? And that's what I want to do, and the game keeps up with you, right? So, I meet my foe. First step, spiritual euthanasia. Second step, non-violent beheading, okay? And for them, it's a release. They're relieved, okay? And it, there's a pact and there's an understanding and they're very relaxed at the moment of death. So the meat's tender. Just a minute. You know how you say I'm a psycho? <laughs> You're a psycho. What is wrong with wanting to bring a bit of peace to some village uh, peasant uh, bandits? They've done a lot of bad things, sometimes. <laughs> hey, tell him about your cat guy. Oh, my he's cat awesome guy. Too, yeah. My cat guy, whole nother character. Whole nother he's an character. archer. Oh, he can, he's such an accurate archer. He could knock an arrow into your nostril from the other side of the mountain. You're just walking along and then bang! Where did that come from? Uh, you know, I'm going to need a new hat. Uh, Okay, I think we've heard enough about your guy. I want to hear about Gatesy's guy, because you, you play the game too. I want to hear about how you do it. Oh, okay. You don't want to hear about my cat guy? No, I'm, no, I'm good. I mean, there's a lot of stories. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> My woman making mischief in the market square. He plays a woman, a lot of blokes do. What's weird about that? My woman weaving magic with the silver tie. I didn't say that it was weird. I think you're projecting. See the ripple of the breeze in her fine blonde mane. Her medium yet powerful build. An avid collector of books. She trained in ballet as a child. Talking about Skyrim. My woman, she's a massive fan of Kurt Bile. Thinks Will Ferrell films are juvenile. Doesn't stay in one place long. Cause she's got quite a lot on. And we talk on Skype when we can. He makes his character look like his girlfriend, so it's a blurry line. She's gone to work. Again across the sea. Now it's two months again away from me. Now, as the lights dim, I boot up sky. I make her look like her in a cosplay way. She does what she would do. That's how I play. Her whim is my whim when I play. Skyrim We're on the same journey She has her back to me Till she comes back Knowing that we were going with an orchestra gave us courage to make really bold, creative decisions. So Yoni mm. brought that that melody and the, the words in. It was beautiful. And then and then it was kind of this thing of like, well, how do we get from A to B? How do we sort of, you know, morph into mm. something like that? And it's sort of, well, you don't. You just do it with con conviction. And I think that's one of the reasons that works. And which is great. That's the, probably the most the, the strongest bit of a collaboration like this. I wouldn't have known how to start that idea because mm. I'm too close to it. And it might have turned out very differently but because Jon knows the story and Jon knows me. I think he wrote that bit quite beautifully, actually. So that's Thanks. 
Yeah, no worries. <laughs> when the orchestra really gets that fortissimo, it sort of ends up drowning things out. I'm going to talk to the sound guys as well. It's fine. It's just, yeah, it's I mean, I'm hearing voice. laughs in the midst of full orchestral fury, yeah. so yeah. it's obviously getting through. There's so much forward planning and making decisions about things that are going to become a reality in three months, and you have to lock off the charts two weeks out, and, you know, it's a lot of just kind of going, well, based on my experience, I think this choice is going to be the right one. Often we're doing a month season of a show with only the three of us, so if we want to ch change a bit of a song after, you know, three performances, we can do that. The whole thing's much more fluid, whereas this is a real challenge for us in terms of our confidence as creative people. We only get two shots at it. We get an opening night and a closing night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone, in the, even the rehearsals we've been having, they've been saying now, remember the rehearsals are for the orchestra. And they go, yeah, yeah, but we've never actually <laughs> sung with an orchestra before. <laughs> Austin send us these um, mock-ups, you know, they're basically sampled orchestras of the arrangements. They, they sound amazing too. Mm. But you tend to go, okay, where's my little hook for my entrance? Oh, it's that flute part. We got here this morning and I'm going, oh no, the flute guy's like a mile away and I can't <laughs> even hear him anymore. So what am I going to, okay, I'm watching, um, I'm watching Austin. Is it is that the down bit or is that the down bit? <laughs> okay, maybe we should have... Maybe we like... should just learn to read music. Yes, <laughs> quick, quick, so what are the... <laughs> so many good games that you refuse to play. Jack and Daxter, Salmon, Max and Monkey, I don't know the Diablo's Riddle, Murder, Riddle, 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 or do you know maybe seven shows before opening with an orchestra? Mm. The mere fact that they're there it tips the show into this whole another area. Just, just like adult responsibility. Yes. <laughs> yes. We could be playing in the sun down on a beach, throwing a frisbee at a dog. But here on the couch, we don't need the world. We got each other, cause we're good friends. What's it been like working with the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra? Truly excellent. You know, I've been very lucky in my career to work with some of the greatest musicians on the planet. Uh, I, I say honestly with no hyperbole, and I do not lay claim to being one of those greatest musicians on the planet. I'm just lucky I get to put parts in front of them and hear them turn it into something far beyond what I could have hoped. And what was the experience like working with Austin? It was a real dream and I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to have this kind of relationship with any other person. Yeah, they're, mm, they're reading the smiles. They're reading the hell out of it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of smiles. There's a lot of smiles during um, the journey one. <laughs> <laughs> they will disavow this dramatically, but I am now the fourth member of Tripod for the next, <laughs> for the next few days. Every collaboration you do, your mind's a bit stretching and it never comes back to its original shape, you know? It's been a huge for us in terms of our relationship creatively, what we can do musically, you know, how to tell stories. I'll tell you what really makes me cry, the fact that Jan here has never played it. There's a song early on uh, in the show which lays out Yoni's taste in games, which is very, very simple. It's called Does It Have Guns, right? And this is his mission statement as a, as a character in the show. And we kind of had about half of it when we went to LA to, to finish writing the show. We kind of thought, where can it go from here? And then it just becomes the most mental kind of 11, 8. This is back to West Side Story. There's a yeah. little bit of like the dance of the gym going on in there and, and then it goes into this sort of back to the waltz and then it goes into this almost Harry Seacon Jerusalem kind of moment at the end and musically it is just insane and I just I'm I was laughing the whole time watching it today so I hope that's my favorite I think that song's a really good example of, the, of of how Austin is more than the orchestrator in this show because initially does it have guns was just going to be like this little sting does it have guns does it have guns you know and then he's like 
make why why isn't that a song? Make that into a song. Does it have guns? Does it have guns? Does it have guns? I want to feel the warm thrill of a projectile-based kill. Will it give me the feeling I get when I'm shooting some schmuck in the head? Where there's no second guessing, no stressful assessing, a quick trigger press and he's dead. Can I take out my angst of the day in a hellish explosive display? That's the game I want to play, one that has guns. Does it have guns? Do your best. I'll be over here thinking about my next words with friends. Chuck okay. going. There is this one game no, with no, a gun. No, 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 no. In song, please. Well, well, there is this one game that has a gun. You'd love it. It's a powerful one. You shoot at a wall and it makes a portal. You can bend space and time. It's so fun. Are there people? There's robots and you. So it's just at the robots you shoot. No, you don't shoot the robots. Then who do you shoot? You shoot at a wall. That sounds not fun at all. Guns, guns, does it have guns? If not, then you've lost me before you've begun. Don't care what it's about, I will hear you out. If it has guns, does it have guns? Does it have guns? OK, I'll be upfront about this one. In a way, it's the original gun. But it's better than bullets. You aim and then pull it. Don't say bow and arrow. I'm done. <laughs> Next time you pitch a game to me, ask this question in your own head. Often it is the band at the front and then the orchestra behind and there's this sort of like, you know, unwritten line between the two. Thank you, Thank you so much. Good on you. That's good. Thank you. It's a nice brass version of it. What I really love about this show is that we've worked an awful lot on really bringing the two elements together. So there's lots of times when Tripod are talking with the orchestra, they're talking back. They've even got a few lines, you know, during some of the songs. And, and that sort of stuff is a lot of fun, you know. This is the sort of thing that really breaks it up for us. And, and it also shows the audience that, uh, you know, these musicians are here to have fun as well. They, they love these sorts of things like the audience does. And, and that sort of interaction that you get between uh, performers and audiences is, is really strong. Austin, I want you to know, I love that music, it's awesome. In fact, in the break I bought the CD, I've already ripped it and torrented it. Right. Sorry. You. Sorry, Rob, can we stop, mate? Sorry, am I allowed to talk straight to Rob? We, we just, we hit it well, off. Well, you did, so what's the matter? Okay. Um, 
What sort of reactions are you seeing from the orchestra when they're playing this kind of music? Every orchestra is different all over the world. Some are so excited and they love it. They just say, this is music that I hear because I go home and play these games. And they're gamers themselves in the orchestra. And then there's others I've, I've, I've worked with some where they see themselves as generously departing from their typical place in the kind of classical lineage to do us this favor of their performance. 15, 20 years from now, when just the natural ebb and flow of generational change happens, it, those stories will be fewer and fewer because just the idea of not being a gamer will be like saying, no, I don't read books or I don't watch film or television ever. Orchestral music is um, in so much of our lives in, in you know, movies, TV shows and you know, all video games. Sometimes people forget that you know, that sort of sound, that sort of power requires you know, 60, 70, 80 people um, all working together to bring that whole thing out there. And so it's quite a spectacle and it's it quite emotional for um, people to sort of hear something that they um, haven't heard before on a topic that they really love and you bring all of that together and it can be quite overwhelming. Edinburgh 2014. Instead of visiting actual castles with Jon and Gatesy, I, Scott, was raiding pretend castles with my mate Wilson back in Australia. That's who I can be. I can be Wilson. I can be Scott's friend. All I want. All I want. Is for you to understand I'm not asking for much I just want to play World of Warcraft with you That's all I want All I want Is to play well with you And be with my family But I can't You've got to get those boots you need and get your armor checked so we can gem them I up. can't be tired on those days. We're hoping for some epic drops. Fiona's there's so much yet to do now. so we can be prepared for the training. expansion set. Apparently the level cut is at 100 now. Expansion. And now there's mythic raids. We should go on one. Two hours a week on a Wednesday night. You're not hearing me. Okay, what about one hour? One hour's too much. Actually, one hour's not even worth it. Don't worry. I'm hoping our, our love for, for, for the medium feels authentic to people even if they don't necessarily share yeah. that love or if that love for them is directed somewhere else into cars or, you know, porcelain dolls or whatever. But I hope for other people they go, I've never heard anything like this before. Yeah. It's because it's just this nuts combination. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> this is an art form for everyone, whether it's Angry Birds on your phone or Journey or whatever, like the idea is that it's so malleable. And so the show is not explicitly meant to be kind of a evangelizing for games, but I hopefully there's some kind of takeaway for certain folks that are right there ready to hear that. Holding off the plastic rat. Put the disc in for the first time. 
Is there one song in particular that you had in your mind from the very beginning? When we used to tour a lot and tour around with our Xbox and play Halo in, in hotels a lot, um, we found ourselves making up little songs as we, you know, kind of when you narrate as you play, mm. well, our version of that is sort of singing. You, you're playing against someone else and, and like, you, you, you're just making mistakes with mm. your gun selection yeah, or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. like, I was fumbling with my guns when I met you. There is a really specific bit of, of Blood Gulch. And if you get your warthog in on the wrong angle, you, you just, you root it, you can't get it back out again. So we always called that the hole of embarrassment. And it was kind of this Jewish, kind of this Oliver, this Fagan, I entered through the hole of embarrassment. And so we've put, we've turned it into Halo the musical, basically. Preposterous. It's preposterous. It is preposterous. And it's, and it's like, we never dreamed that we would get to do Halo the musical with an orchestra. If you're driving if our daughter and you take a wrong turn and you get stuck in that cave and you can't get back out again and you're going forward and reversing elsewhere the fight rages on It's your own private battle You have entered I entered through the hole of embarrassment. I entered through the hole of embarrassment. I entered through the hole of embarrassment. Now that's where I belong. I know I should just jump out of the water. On foot I could be but I had such great visions of me driving to that hill Racking up kill after kill, now I guess I never will I entered through the hole of embarrassment What a dickhead! I entered through the hole of embarrassment What a starman so I'm and stuck so here in the hole of embarrassment And that's where I belong I was in the aftermath of a big gun fight with another guy. But I had walked away with my shields back up and my head held high. Teabag my dead opponent, a moment to check my supplies. Then I got a nasty surprise. I was fumbling with my guns when I met him. Fumbling, he was fumbling. I was fumbling with my guns when I met you. Fumbling, he was fumbling. Well, I was on such a murderous high. And I pressed X when I should have pressed Y. Why, 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 why? When I met you, I was fumbling with my gun. needed a boost I was useless at this damn game I'd become used to getting shot in the head again I was the butt of everyone's rifle just a mere trifle on the gulch Not much more than mulch Before I could comprehend my surroundings I'd pop the pounding just a felt notch Look 
looking up at a bobbing crotch. of my gun like a melon waiting to explode and you were trying to reload I was fumbling with my gun I'm gonna whack you like the dog you are but I'm fumbling 